You're watching The Pastor's Perspective on the Redeeming Grace YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. we continue to post videos. One of the most important questions that many people have asked me recently, some face-to-face, -face, some through email, uh, just being around town and running into people, uh, is, is Mike, what, what, how do we how do we promote purity in our children, young children, teens? I mean, living in a society like this, how do we, what do we do? Uh, basically, what, what do we do? And as parents, uh, and as a parent, obviously we can, if, if anything can cause us anxiety, it can be issues involving our children. And it can be looking at the world and looking at what's happening and saying, how do we raise a godly child in this environment. And I would say a couple things. First thing I want to say to you is I'm with you in this battle. Obviously I have three children and I have in no way shape or form mastered the art of parenting. And I remember Adrian Rogers saying the problem with parenting is by the time you know anything you're out of a job. So I'm in this, I'm in this battle with you. But I would say this, just remember that Believers all throughout church history have been under heavy persecution and have had to wrestle with these same questions and, and think about some of the same things we're having to think about. And ultimately it comes back to relying on God, relying on the Holy Spirit, and, and getting the Word of God before our children. Uh, but also I think something that is very, very important is, is look, children, they, they need our guidance. We want to shelter them from the sin of the world to a certain extent, and certainly when they reach certain ages, and we have to be wise about this, we want, we want to allow them to, uh, to be aware of certain things happening in the world so we can speak to them. Now, this whole issue with, with marriage uh, and, and this gay uh, so-called marriage, it, we can't, it's out there. And there's no way that, they, that our children are not going to hear of this. I mean, they probably already all have heard of it. I mean, they're going to hear about it. So I think the law of first hearing is very, very important. And, and so I think as parents, we should sit them down. I'm not suggesting to sit down a two-year-old, okay? Uh, but we should sit our child down at a relatively young age and begin to teach them these things and say, you know, this is what you might see in the world and this is what they're saying, but here's what God says. Uh, so I think we need to be very diligent in doing that. So I don't think that we really should, it, it's not a matter of changing anything. It, th these are things we should have been doing all along. So it might just be that if we weren't doing those things, we really need to make sure we're doing those things. And look, as a church, We've, we knew this day was coming. Uh, that's why about, about five years ago we rewrote and kind of tailored a, uh, a new children's catechism or our children's questions that we use during the worship hour. We tailored them uh, to, to be somewhat apologetic. And that's why some of the questions uh, in there have to do with marriage, uh, God's design for marriage between one man, one woman. And I remember when we did that, I had some people, some people didn't even go to the church, but they'd accessed it on the website, and uh, they said, why, why are you, why do you have questions about this? Why are you doing this? And uh, my rationale at that time was, look, the children today need to hear this. They need to hear it at a young age, because if we don't tell them this, they're going to be hearing everything else. And you'll notice with our children's questions, by the way, every question uh, always says, according to the Bible, and then the answer is always the Bible says. Because we want our children to learn that it's about the Word of God. It's about what God says. It's not about what the scientist says. It's not about uh, what anyone else says. It's not even always about what the preacher says. If he's not saying the Word of God, it's about what 
the Word of God says. And then in our children's classes, the curriculum, we've been very, very careful with that and very, very intentional. And uh, the Answers in Genesis curriculum we're using now has very much an apologetical twist to it as you go through. So, so everything we're doing with that, and then all the way up on to the teens. The teens are not just being entertained. Uh, the teens aren't going up and... and, and the, we call them the young Puritans at RGBC. They're not going up and having pizza and ice cream every night and just playing video games. Okay, that's that's not going to ground anyone and get anyone ready to go out in the world. They're they're learning the Word of God, and not only are they learning the Word of God, but they're being able to discuss and talk about uh, what's going on in the world and and think through what God's Word says versus what's going on in the world. And, and, and they're thinking things through biblically, thinking things through logically, so that they have an apologetic, so that when they go out, they can defend the faith. And that is extremely important. We're, we're hearing so many uh, are leaving churches, and then they go out to college or whatever, and, and at college age, they quote-unquote lose their faith. Now, of course, we know you can't lose a true faith if you have it. But I think the problem is people aren't being grounded. So everything we're doing, and we don't have all the answers. We're, we, are, we know we must rely on the Spirit of God and the grace of God. We know that. But everything we have in place from the youngest child, things that are in the nursery, all the way up uh, to the young Puritans, everything is prayed through, thought out, and everything we are doing is very, very intentional. And so I would just say to the parents uh, to be aware of that. And, and then also in your own homes, again, just continue to teach your children how to pray. Uh, you have devotions, but also teach them how to have their own devotions and the importance of that. And, uh, and, and, and let's help each other. Let's encourage each other. As the book of Hebrews says, encourage each other more and more, uh, especially as we see the day approaching, the day when the Lord will come back. Uh, let's just encourage each other. And in the area of parenting, let's encourage each other. And let me say one more thing before I finish, and that is with our children, we must be extremely careful, guys. We, we have got to look at the media. We've got to watch their, their iPads, uh, iPods, uh, computers, you know, anything on the Internet. We have got to be very, very vigilant with that, uh, even to the point of, of siding on, on the erring on the side of caution, but make sure you have blockers on your computers. Make sure you uh, don't allow them uh, except X amount of time uh, on this media, and, and make sure that it's right there in front of you. you. I cannot stress enough how vigilant you have to be, and in fact, right now we're working uh, on a parent's summit uh, that's going to be coming up at the end of the summer. Uh, beginning of the fall here at RGBC, where we can address some of these issues just simply to help equip all of us in the day and age which which we live so that we can be better parents, ultimately, for God's glory. 